Good morning, Central. Happy Saturday. I hope that your weekend is off to a good start. Uh, we have the honor and privilege of finishing up the book of Ecclesiastes today. We have been, uh, boy, you know, I forgot to add up how many weeks we've been studying the book of Ecclesiastes. I hope that it's been a blessing to you. It has been to me to read these thoughts of um, a man, one of the kings of Israel, who asked God for wisdom and God gave it to him. And I, I want to remember that, you know, despite sometimes the book seeming negative and Solomon seeming a bit pessimistic at times, these, book, th these words come from God. The wisdom that Solomon is trying to impart to us uh, comes from God. And it's a message uh, from him as well that I, I feel like to completely guides our lives uh, even now. So today we get to finish up the very last uh, part of the book of Ecclesiastes, and I love the way that it ends. I think it's such an appropriate ending and just kind of wraps it up and puts a big bow on it. Uh, so I'm excited to finish it up with you. Now uh, we have to decide what we are studying next. I'm more than willing to uh, take suggestions. If anybody has an idea of a book that you'd like to study, I'd love to hear it. Uh, leave me a comment, send me an email. However you want to get in touch with me, you probably know how to get in touch with me uh, some way. Let me know what you are interested in studying. So, right now, if you'll open up the book, uh, your Bible to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. And we're going to start reading in verse 6 and go all the way to the end. Remember him, that's referring to God, remember him. We're, there's some echoes to the first part of the, um, of the chapter that we studied yesterday. Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken. I had to look that up. I wasn't quite sure. I kind of understood the metaphor uh, based on what's about to come. Solomon is talking about death. Uh, the silver cord, I read a couple of different uh, interpretations of what that might refer to. The one that I think maybe makes the most sense was a cord uh, that they would use uh, to hang a lamp from the ceiling. Sometimes they would use silver uh, to do that wrapped around um, like a piece of silk. And so you can picture uh, an older home where people would live and as uh, maintenance gets neglected, well, that cord would, uh, would break and it would allow the lamp that was on the bottom uh, to break as well. And then the golden bowl uh, could be a metaphor for the skull, which sounds kind of creepy. Uh, but the golden bowl holds our brains and is a precious thing. And so this could be a metaphor for your head getting broken, your skull getting cracked. Um, in context of what's about to come, I, see, I, I, I definitely see that these are metaphors for death. So, okay, I'm already commenting and we haven't even finished. So let me just start over. Ecclesiastes 12.6. Remember him before the silver, co silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken. Before the pitcher is shattered at the spring, and the wheel broken at the well, and the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Everybody say it with me. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Everything is meaningless. Not only was the teacher wise, but he also imparted knowledge to the people. He pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. The teacher searched to find just the right words, and what he wrote was upright and true. The words of the wise are like goads. They're, collecting, they're collected sayings like firmly embedded nails given by one shepherd. Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them. Of making many books there is no end, and much study wearies the body. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the duty of all mankind. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. Absolutely love the ending to this book. It's a reminder that these words come from God. They were given to Solomon by the one shepherd. And he says, hey, this isn't like... A Pitch your wisdom and we'll add it to the end of this book. This is uh, words from God that came to Solomon. 
And that's the end of the book. So don't feel like you can add any proverb that you want to and say, well, this also came from God. Nope, the book is finished. And the conclusion of all that we have learned from the book of Ecclesiastes is to fear God and keep his commandments. I think that that is an incredibly appropriate way to end this book. That is how we escape the drudgery of day-to-day living. That is how we rise above a life that is focused on temporary things. It is when, when we live our lives by that principle, fear God and keep his commandments. That's my prayer for all of us, that we would do just that, that our life would rise above whatever situation we find ourselves in when we put that commandment first in our lives. Fear God and keep his commandments. Thank you very much for studying this book with me. Uh, Let's pray. Father, give us the courage to live our lives that way, to put you first, to recognize the reverence and the awe that we need to have when we approach our relationship with you. God, help us to have the courage to keep your commandments when it's convenient and when it's not. Father, we thank you for the privilege that it is to serve you in your kingdom. We pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Have a good weekend, church. Looking forward to being with you for Central Online tomorrow morning at 930.